Hey guys, Eric Gonzalez here. Hope you're doing marvelously well. Marvelously well. Marvelously well. Doing marvelously well. So typically, I'm the guy behind the camera. I'm the videographer here at Producer like Pro, the editor, but I'm also here at Spitfire Studios as the studio manager for Warren and his engineer and all his projects. So there's been some questions in our Fact Friday videos of how to get started in the industry, how to get a job. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about just that, how I got started here at Spitfire Studios got to work in on all these videos for Producer like a Pro. In this video, this is gonna be my history from beginning to end of how I got here. So for anyone that's looking to get into the industry, I hope you can take something from this video. And hopefully this video will inspire you to get that gig, that dream job that you want for the rest of your life. So quickly to start from the beginning, I've always been into music. I had started playing guitar when I was 11 or 12, took lessons, was in a school of rock band. They teach you how to play music, how to play in a band together, and you do a bunch of shows. And I had the dream of, hey, I wanna be famous. I wanna be a rock star. But down the line, I also knew there was that fear of, well, what if I'm not that 1% that makes it? There's a reality in life, right? Where you can't just, you can't just decide to be a rock star and all of a sudden you become one. So that's when I started thinking, well, what else is there to do in music? Because I've known, I've always wanted to be in music, but what is there to do? I didn't know producing was a thing. Uh, I, I didn't know audio engineering was a thing. I didn't understand any of that. I just thought music just happened. So years later in high school, I learned about internships and that's when I sought one out. I was lucky enough that one of my teachers had a connection to Epitaph Records, which is a record label owned by Brett Gerwitz, who is a guitar player for Bad Religion. And it runs a lot of punk bands and metal bands. And that's when I learned that internships are very important to get into at least this line of work, because that's where I think you really start to learn is when you're hands on. Now at Epitaph, I was doing mostly file stuff. There was no actual work in music, so I stayed there for a year and it was awesome, it was fun, it was cool, but that's when I learned that I wanted to be hands-on in music. So after a year, I left Epitaph, found another internship at a creative agency that does music for commercials. I just used Google to find these places and there I got to be more hands-on with Pro Tools, learning some sound design stuff. It was really simple things that I did, but I was working on Pro Tools and learning this is how you push play. This is how you do one edit and you can grab the clip and you can drag it. So cool. But nonetheless, it was a great learning experience and finally got me onto Pro Tools. I did two different schools. The first one I did was called Recording Connection. Puts you one-on-one -on -one with a mentor who is your teacher and you guys follow a curriculum and you get your textbooks. And in that curriculum, you start learning what mics are the different version of mics, dynamic, ribbon, condenser, and then you start getting more into your DAW, whichever one it is, mine's was Pro Tools. And that's when I started learning file management, micing things up, little simple techniques. I was still a beginner learning like the simplest of things, but I was taking it all in. I was really excited and it was just, it was just fun. Now the second school, I went to a community college that had a recording program and I did a second school because I wanted to keep learning. And I think that's the important thing was I wanted to keep learning. I wanted to take it all in, but I didn't have a job in music so I didn't want to wait around and do nothing I I was still in bands but I wanted to keep pursuing this career potential because I just wanted that fail safe in case I didn't make it as a musician so now when I started the second school this is where I get my connection to Warren it's not the school itself that connected me to him it's what I learned at the school and this I think is one of the most valuable lessons I had learned and what's funny is it wasn't about music. I was in a class and we were looking up these success stories. And in one of these success stories, this guy, I forgot his name, but he was looking for internships. And I think this was during like the 80s, maybe late 70s. I don't remember the time, but he had this brilliant idea. He went and he bought mannequins and he took the arms and legs off and he shipped the arm and leg to all these studios and a note that said, I'd give an arm and a leg for an opportunity. And I i mean, its it was just really clever. Now I didn't go sending out arms and legs. And what clicked in my mind when I heard that success story is the fact that this guy went out and he didn't wait around and just waited for an opportunity to come to him. He went and sought the opportunity. I thought I can do that. I can just, you know, find a place and do it. Just reach out, put myself out there and find this opportunity. So I went home, 
Google recording studios in LA and started submitting. Made myself a little resume with the internships I had done, whatever experience I had. I sent out those emails to all the recording studios I could find, but it just wasn't enough. It was maybe four or five. And I thought, well, what are the chances? I need more. So I remember another part of the success story is the person reached out to individual people that were successful in the industry that they wanted to be in. So then I Googled Los Angeles producers and I started emailing everyone I can find on there. Everyone, Every, each link was just another email sent and each one was personalized. I didn't just copy and paste the email. I tried my best to learn about this person and sent the email out. And one of those people was Warren. Now side note, uh, out of all the people I emailed, I think Warren was the most qualified person and I almost didn't send him the email because I saw his website and he had Aerosmith, he had the fray up there, he had movie soundtracks that he's worked on. And I just thought, there's no way I'm gonna get a reply. Maybe I should move on to the other one. And I think that was self doubt. And maybe out of fear, it just took me a second, but I got over it and I sent him the email anyways. Now, funny part is out of everyone I emailed, one person got back to me and it was Warren. So now starts my internship with Warren. I did start off part-time uh, coming in three days a week. I worked it out with Warren, let him know like, I'm still in school, I want to finish school, but I want to be here. I let him know I want to be here, I, I don't want to slack off. And I made sure I wasn't slacking off. You, with an opportunity like this, I didn't want to let it go by, I didn't want to waste it. So luckily what I learned in my past internships helped me a lot here. File management, that's what I started doing here. I sat in the corner right over there on the couch. I just sat there and I'm, I'm incredibly shy. I'm still shy. I, I right here in front of the camera. I, this is like social anxiety, even though it's a camera, it's the shyness is not going away. So I sat there, didn't say a peep. I was even too shy to get up and go to the restroom. I was just, just flabbergasted at where I was just here watching Warren work with the engineer and the bands coming in. And I realized I didn't know anything. <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing, but I had experience while managing in my other internships. So I was able to do that. And I started doing that. I started cataloging it all. And that took about six months to get through, keeping in mind that I was coming in three days a week, but that was my project. And so I did it. I didn't whine. I didn't try to hand it off to someone else or try to avoid it. I did it. I, I was just happy to be here and I wanted to help. And I was taking out the trash, doing all the usual stuff, cleaning up when I can, still being very nimble about it all because I'm still shy, but I was doing it. And of course, taking a good food order. And that's something that Warren, along with a lot of people we interview say today, you've got to know how to take a food order. If you can't take a food order, how are they gonna trust you with anything else? And it totally makes sense. Time goes by, I finish my cataloging. I try to learn everything I can learn from the simplest of tasks of just knowing where things go so I can put it back, where the cable should go wrapping the cables. One of the things was I was so shy, I would just sit down and then the engineer would start cleaning up. And the engineer would tell me, hey, take the initiative and wrap the cables, clean stuff up. When you see it, do it, don't wait to be asked. And I think that was a really important lesson was because I was waiting to be asked. So initiative is very important. Don't just wait around and be told what to do. Don't wait, don't be afraid, just do it. So I kept soaking up everything I could taking all opportunities, little by little, I was getting more responsibilities, which led me to running audio for Produce Like a Pro, then eventually learning how the cameras work, how to set up the lights, and then I was helping set up those shoots, then I was filming them, then I was mixing the audio, and each one of these is just a different step that within time I was able to take on and be more comfortable with and was just able to just do it. So I just kept learning, absorbing as much as I can. If I was needed for extra shifts I wasn't scheduled for, I'd come in. Uh, I really was a yes man, to be honest. I wouldn't say no. And if it was something I didn't really know how to do, I'd still say yes, which is risky, but I would then learn. I would YouTube it. I would figure it out. I would Google like, what did I just say yes to? <laughs> what am I doing? How do I do it? But I would figure it out and then I would just wing it. And I feel like for me, that's just helped me really learn. There's so many times here in Produce Like a Pro where I'm just winging things because I don't know what to expect, especially in sessions. Anything goes wrong and if it can go wrong, it really it will go wrong. So you just gotta be prepared. And to be honest, the best times I learn are when things do go wrong. I've learned here that there's multiple ways to route things. If one way of routing it fails, 
there's another way and if I don't know what that way is yet then I'll figure it out so I just kept all this up and eventually the next opportunity came when the engineer was leaving state by that time I had been here for a year and a half already Warren had known me and I knew my place around the studio and I had picked up studio etiquette there was still so much more to learn but I was at the level where Warren trusted me at least I hope he did <laughs> and then once I was in the engineer seat now I had to learn how to do all that stuff. There was another section of learning and like the learning just never stopped. And I love when we go and have these interviews for the channel with these top producers, mixers, engineers, and Warren's having a conversation with them on the fact that they're still learning themselves. So that's always cool. It, make, it makes me feel a little more confident in myself when I don't know how to do something and I'm still Googling things. Almost eight years later, and I'm now in front of the camera talking to you all and telling my story. I guess the point of this video is I just wanted to tell my story of how I got this opportunity. And it wasn't just me waiting for the opportunity. I went out there and I sought it out and I didn't give up and I emailed as many people as I could. I kept learning, going to schools, getting internship after internship and learning what I could there. And all those experiences have added up and I think I've just learned so much from file management, studio etiquette, to the technical stuff of miking things, outputting and routing and setting gain, to personality even, being a good person that people want to work with and, and just becoming friends to each their own. but. I think that's important. There's just tons that I've learned through all these experiences and I'm still learning, obviously. I'm only 27 right now. So I guess the reason for this video is to help out for anyone that has those questions of how to get started in the industry. I, I still think I'm just a baby. I'm learning so much and I, I'm just winging it and making sure I don't screw up. But if and when you do make mistakes, learn from it. Those are the times when I've learned the most, especially the rowdy in the studio. And don't sit around waiting for opportunities. If you really want this and you have a drive for it go out there and seek the opportunity go google and just find who's around your area even if they don't have a post up asking for help or an assistant or an intern just email them what's the worst that can happen i only got one email out of the 50 to who knows how many emails i sent and that one email paid off Thanks again for watching everyone. Uh, I, I really hope this helped a lot of people that may have had questions or at least it entertained you guys. This is only my second video I've done here in front of the camera, not behind the camera. It's weird. But um, again, Eric Gonzalez, uh, you may see more of me on camera. We'll see. And uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe, click the like button and Make rock and roll hysteria. <laughs>